Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation today. We've been doing a series of lectures on endocrinology. All the hormones are recovering. Today we're going to talk about another topic uh, which is subacute thyroiditis. First thing is I need to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Pramil Charyat. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency, associate professor of medicine to a large medical school in the United States. So let's get into our topic. Again, the topic subacute thyroiditis. What's the first thing we can find it, right? You got and patchy inflammation of thyroid gland associated with the granuloma. Remember the word granuloma. Okay, before we just, just jump in, there's two other terms you have to know. There are even many terms they use to describe this disease, right? The first thing you need to know, decurvin thyroiditis. Sometimes for examination, they might, you might get confused. And the other thing is subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, okay? So be familiarized with the other term. Two major terms we have to know: decurrent thyroiditis, subacute granulomatous thyroid. They all same subacute thyroiditis. Okay, don't get confused. It's good to know the other two names, right? Let's look at the epidemiology a little bit. Of course, it's more than female. What's the ratio? Three to one. Okay, and what is the distribution? We talk about distribution around thirty to fifty. Pick around like forty to fifty years. Remember that. Now, so we talk about the other names. Let's. Go back to the other names of endocurrent thyroiditis, subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, giant cell thyroiditis, subacute non separative thyroiditis, thyroiditis, pseudotuberculous thyroiditis, stroma granulomatosa. So, so many different names are out there, okay? Just be familiar with it. Two names I already said decurrent and subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, you should know. Okay, now what are the exact causes? Like nobody know, but there's a lot of things. I mean, there's some genetic causes also. When you look at the genetic association, HLA B35 and HLA B67, and then we're going to jump into the virus. There is a lot of theory because a lot of viruses are involved. You can start with EBV, Coxsackie, mumps, measles, adenovirus, HIV, and influenza. A lot of information is coming on COVID also kind of affecting those and uh, causing subacute thyroiditis, okay? And so, now let's look at the pathophysiology. We're going back to our picture right here. What happens, main, the, mainly the pathophysiology we talk about, probably a viral infection, okay? So what happened to the thyroid? <clears throat> you got virus-induced host tissue damage, exposure to novel viral or thyroid antigen, activation of cytotoxic lymphocytes, thyroid follicular cell damage, and then finally you get this granuloma over here, okay? Okay, now let's look at our clinical presentation, what happens? The main thing is the thyroid toxicosis or the hyperthyroidist picture in the beginning. So it's a thyroid, a thyroiditis, a lot of inflammation. What are we going to have? An anterior neck pain, jaw, ear, and pain kind of travels to the jaw, ear, and occiput. Flu-like symptoms, remember, they can have like a, a usually upper respiratory symptoms 30 days before uh, this happens, okay? So always look out for that. And then you got hyperthyroid features, which are there. We talk about um, nervousness, tachycardia, sweating, tremors, palpitation, weight loss, all this hyperthyroid thyroid or thyrotoxicus picture is the first one and then what happens you know eventually like 80% of the people kind of recover but 20% is going into permanent hypothyroidism okay so there is a mixture of hyperthyroid and hypothy hypothyroid features but mainly focus on the thyrotoxicosis picture with the hyperthyroidism anterior neck pain kind of go to the jaw the ear and then you got like nervousness tachycardia swelling tremors palpitation and all that okay now we have, let's look at the labs, and before we go into the labs, we got nice, beautiful graph over here. What we already said, what is the first phase? Thyrotoxic phase. What happens? You got um, TSH. Let's look at our TSH, right? That is going to be usually low. Free T4 and free T3 will be increased in the initial stages, right? And then what happens is, like, then you got, you're going to go and recover, and then you can have 20% is going to end up in hypothyroidism phase. So let's look at our diagnosis right here. In the thyrotoxicoid phase, thyrotoxicosis phase, you got decreased TSH, and then you got increased free floor and uh, free T3, okay? And then hypothyroid phase, there is increased TSH and decreased free, free T4 and T3. And a couple of other laws we need to know. We need to always check for ESR, which is gonna be elevated, CRP also, and go in, in, 
will be increased, and thyroglobulin will be increased, and so the inflammation WBC will also be increased, okay? Now, then you have to do this radio iodine uptake study. How do you do the radioactive iodine uptake? You give iodine with some technetium label <coughs> uh, marker, new, uh, and then you wait like three, four hours, and you scan the thyroid, and what do you see? You see decreased uptake of iodine in the patient with uh, um, subacute thyroiditis, okay? And then you also have, this, uh, you have to do an ultrasound of the thyroid gland. What will you find? Hypoechoic region, decreased vascularity, and cobblestone appearance. Those are the classic finding you will see in the uh, ultrasound of the thyroid. Now, <clears throat> histopathology is also very, very important. You know, if we look at this, you can always see this granuloma right here. And so, <clears throat> multinucleated giant cells with the granuloma, that's a classic finding in the histology in the subacute thyroiditis. Now, how do you treat it? First line treatment, let's talk about you always can give NSAID, okay? But large doses like aspirin, 2600 mg per day, divided dose, you don't give it like right away. And then you got ibuprofen, 3,200 milligram per day. Again, you just give it in divided doses. And then you can give, we should give beta blockers, and then steroid, I mean, prednisone, you can give 40 mg, just give for two weeks. Those are the mainstay of the treatment, okay? This is where in the hyperthyroid or thyrotoxicosis phase. Now, when you become hypothyroid phase, which is like 20% of the people, what do you do? You just have to replace, just like uh, usual, you give like thyroid supplement or levothyroxine, okay? So that is what like in a nutshell, so just go back and take a step back and see what is it. Just define there is again <clears throat> transient patchy inflammation of thyroid gland associated with the granuloma formation right here. Okay, and then we talk about the two other terms we need to know which one are they? Decurrent thyroiditis and subacute granulomatous thyroiditis. Sometimes examination question is going to be different, but don't get confused. Okay, now <clears throat> the causes always think about this viral causes. COVID is becoming very common again. The, we talk about this uh, pathophysiology right here. Again, follicular cell damage because of this T lymphocyte, uh, cytotoxic T lymphocyte, and that also leads to granuloma. And then remember, thyrotoxic phase <coughs> in the definition. Uh, not the, I mean, you know, if you look at the labs, TSH is going to be decreased, free T4 is high, and then he's going to hypothyroidism phase in 20% of the people, and then uh, the, you also check the ESR, CRP, and thyroglobulin, and WBC will be elevated, and then you do the radioiodine uptake test, and you look at the ultrasound, and the classic histopathology, granuloma formation with the multinucleated giant cells, and the treatment, and say beta blocker and prednisone, my friend, okay? Again, this is in the thyrotoxic phase, and then 20% of the people will end up in hypothyroid so then those cases you have to give thyroid supplement okay thank you so much for watching we'll be back with another presentation soon please help us uh, if you could subscribe to our channel so we can make more presentation like that have a blessed day